let's get started here today. Um, what I want to talk to all of you about here today are the gods and the planes beyond uh, in Eventide. This is something I've been working on a lot lately, and uh, it's high time that I uh, decide to chat with all of you to give you an idea about uh, what the deities are up to while all these kind of bad things are happening to the world and uh, what, uh, what exists beyond the world. So, um, Eventide, uh, back in the earliest history of the world, um, in this setting, the gods um, have always been seen to live in the heavens above. In fact, when people look up at the constellations that they see, they attribute those to deities. In fact, all of the constellations in the night sky are part of the pantheon. And uh, this has always been kind of historically the practice. Now, the gods are uh, worshipped worldwide. Um, the, the night sky is obviously visible mostly worldwide. Uh, the most powerful and common gods are the ones around kind of the equatorial tilt. Uh, that way almost everyone can see them. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, there are gods that are more regional based on what part of the planet can see their constellation. Um, I actually had to do a uh, quite a bit of research on how uh, that works uh, to make sure I was building it right. And um, so uh, everyone looks up to the heavens to to see the gods. They see them in the constellations up above. And um, this has always been the way it is. So all of the holy symbols have like constellations on them. And that's just kind of the nature of how these work. And over the years... Um, you know, uh, all of the ancient history is, is adorned with these, these ancient symbols. But the events of Eventide kind of shook things up. And it, it seems like from that point forward, the pantheon, the gods, have started to fade from the world. Now, that has been a long process and one that um, over the years... Uh, many of these lesser gods have just fallen out of favor and they're not really worshipped anymore and... Um, and their constellations have faded from the sky. In the end, the world has been left with five deities. Just five. And uh, these deities hold sway over the realms. It, it, it is said in ancient myth and history that the deities used to send emissaries. They used to commune with followers. They used to convey their desires, their thoughts. Uh, their 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 dreams with one another and uh, but that is no longer the case the gods don't speak to people directly anymore um, emissaries from beyond are, are rare or, or thought to be almost mythical um, so uh, there are few gods left and uh, these gods are worshipped kind of worldwide uh, different cultures will have different names for them and different aspects of them um, and uh, as a result, the gods have kind of broader portfolios uh, than history would seem to ascribe to them. Um, they have a lot of domains to choose from, and they even have like multiple weapons that, based on whatever sect you're in, your favorite weapon might be different. So there is some variability within the deities themselves. They have like different aspects. Um, but all that said, there are only five of them. The, they go by uh, a lot of names, um, and the entries for them uh, include all the things you would expect to see, edicts, anathema, um, you know, what type of divine font they offered, their clerics, uh, what, their, what their skill is, what their favorite weapons are, what their domains are. But there's a few new interesting things in here, like, you know, what are their other names, uh, what is their constellation, uh, things like that. So, um, the world... Uh, has these five deities. And the, and the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, commonly referred to, and, and I'm going to say this now, the names are very, very subject to change right now. These are initial draft names and may change as we go along. So uh, work with me here. These are kind of first note ideas here. There's Astromari. She is the, the good deity and uh, accepts kind of all good followers. Um, and uh, her constellation is a blazing star, so it's like a it's like a comet uh, built out of stars. And uh, and uh, this is a very very typical kind of good deity to help the 
help the sick, you know, defend the, the innocent, punish the wicked, offer redemption and quarter to those who seek it, uh, but stand firm against wickedness, that sort of thing. Um, so um, very, very kind of uh, uh, good deity. Um, worshipped in a lot of places. Uh, the, uh, the dwarves call her the Hearthblade. Uh, the elves call her the Night Star, although it's an elven, so it doesn't quite sound like that. Um, uh, no, she doesn't have a, a neutral to her alignment. She's just the good deity. That's it. Um, the, the deities in this world don't, don't, aren't partitioned off by, they just have one alignment component. So just good, uh, except all good followers. Uh, next up, we've got, uh, Valinov, the, uh, the lawful deity. Um, Valinov is, uh, the one that put, was said to have put the world to order when it first started growing wild and chaotic from the first seed of creation. Uh, this is the god of structure and order and rigid codes. Um, this is the primary deity of the Zenkar Imperium. Uh, their deity is not good. Their deity is law. Their, their deity is order. His constellation is an hourglass with its sands perfectly balanced. Um, so Valinov is all about keeping everything in its proper order and in its proper place. Um, the dwarves call this, this deity Erd, the anvil smith. Uh, the, uh, elves call this the true orc, oak, the true oak. Did I say true orc? No, that's not it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Valinov. There is Ermnagor. Uh, this is the neutral deity. Um, <laughs> true orc. No, it's not the one true orc. Maybe the orcs call call Valinov the one true orc. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down in my notes here. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that, but I'm gonna write it in there for now because it's funny. Um. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Ermagor is uh is both male and female, young, old raging and calm um Ermnagor is passion but also restraint uh and tranquility uh Ermnagor is neutral and uh th their holy uh, their constellation is a bridge um and uh th their their followers are all about finding balance and tranquility and and peace and calm between between all forces um so they they might add uh change to a place that has become stagnant or they might work to find balance in a place that has run amok orcs are not lawful in eventide it's a terrible name i mean but that, that said they still might worship a lawful deity um that's the thing when you've got a when you've got a setting that only has a handful of deities everybody off, offers up worship and prayers to some aspect of that deity um so each one of them has kind of a broader spectrum of portfolio so for example valinov has seven domains ambition cities might perfection protection tyranny and wealth I think there's at least one or two of those that the orcs might offer up uh, uh, a sacrifice to to garner, um, uh, you know, goodwill. So uh, our neutral deity has all of the elemental domains and a lot to do with magic and knowledge. Um, uh, the dwarfs call this the feast hero. <laughs> uh, it's also known as the scales. Um, so... Uh, Next up, we get down to our chaotic deity, Silara, um, and uh, uh, this is what you would expect from a chaotic deity. Uh, she she um, believes that everyone should live the, the life that they choose and live by whatever rules they feel are appropriate. Um, uh, of course, as long as those don't interfere with someone else's ability to make the same choice. So 
all about kind of personal empowerment and personal choice. Um, not just about random acts of chaos. That's not, <laughs> it's not very, very useful to any deity. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. Um, and for those of you asking questions that aren't that aren't strictly related to what's going on right now, uh, just just hold on to those, and at the end, I'll kind of open things up to a Q and A. Um, so, uh, yeah, Silar is called the Raging Axe by the Dwarves or the Guide by the Elves. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of how that that all functions. And then, last but not least, we have an evil deity called Silvex. Um, Silvex is the, 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 the evil deity that offers you limitless powers as long as you, um, you know, have the strength to take it. Um, you know, this is the deity of conquerors and, and would-be savage, uh, butchers. Um, uh, the constellation here is a, uh, dragon. And, uh, so... So, Alara, well done. Yeah, you, you caught on to where I was heading with that. Um, the uh, Silvex, uh, you know, has the, like, you know, take whatever you want and destroy those who stand in your way kind of edicts. Uh, take advantage of every situation and use your enemy's foolish weaknesses against them to ensure your success. Um, so, yeah. Fun times. Uh, uh, other names for this are the devil. <laughs> Uh, the Black River, uh, the dwarves call, call this the Fire Whip. Um, you know, so um, you've got you've got five deities. Now, there used to be more. Um, you know, legends speak of an entire family of deities, many of which were related in uh, a lot of different ways. Sorry, I just noticed a typo. All right, uh, there we go. Fixed. Um... So, uh, but over the years, over the, over the centuries, these deities have just kind of fallen out of favor and disappeared. Um, and, and even so, to go so far as to disappear from the night sky. There are still stars and whatnot up in the skies, but the constellations that made up these other deities are now faded and gone. So, what, what's up there? What's going on with the Outer Plains? So I've, I've seen a lot of people ask, how does this relate to other worlds and things like that? I'm not going to speak specifically to that, because to be honest, how the various campaign settings fit together um, is is kind of up to you. I, I offer a guide to that, um, a way that I think they can all fit together, and the way that works is this. There is a uh, prime plane. This is, this is where the world is. And uh, there are inner planes, there are outer planes, and then there are echo planes. But all of these feed into a prime. The thing is, there's more than one prime. Um, but they all share the same outer, inner, and echo planes. Actually, they all have unique echo planes. But um, they all share the same outer and inner planes. Um, now, the inner planes are your elemental planes. And these create the building blocks of reality. They create energy. They create matter. And, but none of this has animus, none of it has life. It is, it is um, just raw material. It is fire and wind and water and air. It is earth and stone and cosmic dust and, and everything that needs to make, make a world, but none of it is alive. On the opposite end, um, in, in the outer planes, uh, that is the place where um, consciousness is made, where thought is born, where emotions are formed. But when they are formed, they are raw. They have no experiences. They are, they are just dreams. And the way it works is the outer planes uh, and the inner planes are both feeding the material plane. So they, they both lend energy uh, to it. And they do this through uh, the way that these echo planes work. And there's four uh, echo planes. There's the astral, the ethereal, uh, the negative energy plane, and the positive energy plane. And the way this works is the astral plane um, delivers uh, um, 
souls, these raw, unformed things, to the material plane. Uh, the ethereal plane delivers energy and matter and, and all those things to the prime plane. And these things all come together, and that's how creatures are born. And um, throughout their lives, they do good things and they do bad things. And in doing so, they create positive and negative energy. These are siphoned off into their own echo planes, and that energy is then fed back to start the cycle all over again. But when a living creature dies, its matter is returned, uh, and its soul, now ripe with experiences, goes to the outer planes where it is sorted to the plane that is most appropriate to the life that it lived, and its collective knowledges and experiences are then absorbed. And the entire cycle repeats over and over and over again. Um, so the echo planes are called that because they are echoes of reality. The astral plane where it crosses over the prime, everything is thin and ghostly, but then it stretches out through the infinities to those outer planes. The ethereal plane is a lot the same way. It just shows lines of matter and energy when it is overlapping the prime, supplying those things, but it then streaks into this this darkened inner plane where all of the, the elements come from. Um, the positive plane, where it overlaps um, the material plane, um, it uh, creates the wild, a, a place of wild growth and uh, untapped potential and and beauty. So, uh, whereas where the negative plane overlaps, everything is decay and shadow and, and rot. So, <laughs> if you if you put this all together, um, what you've got is kind of this this capsule with the outer planes and the inner planes and the prime plane in the middle and all these echo planes overlapping them feeding energy back and forth pulling it in pushing it out and kind of creating a cycle um that's where the other the other planes of existence come in because there are more than one prime repeating this process over and over and over again so um that's kind of how the cosmology is uh, is built up. Um, the uh, the uh, negative uh, energy plane where it overlaps is also known as the plane of shadow. Um, and the uh, positive energy plane is called the wild plane, which is kind of the, the place where fey and, and wild magic comes from. So let's say you had a tree, okay? Just, just a tree. And you were to bounce between the various echo planes to look at that same tree. This massive tree on the astral plane might just look like a ghostly outline. It doesn't have a soul, so uh, at least not much of one. Uh, uh, and so as a result, it's just kind of a vague outline of a thing. If you were to then flop over to the ethereal plane, you would see a pulsing pattern of, of light, the energy and matter of this thing would be made manifest before you. If you were to pop over to the negative energy plane, you would see kind of a rotting hulk, withered and, and dying. Whereas if you popped over to the positive plane, you would see a vibrant fruit-bearing tree that was twice as big as you thought it was. So, that's kind of how that all works. When you look at people through the various planes, it's the same way. You're not quite seeing what's really there. You're seeing an echo of it that is all kind of tied together. So that's that's a rough idea how the, 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 the planes work. The, uh, the deities live uh, in, the, in the outer planes. Um, but that said, most people living today have no idea what any of this is. The, the people who travel the planes anymore, that's not a thing right? It, it's so rare and so out of the experience of most people that that sounds like a fairy tale. That, that, that's a thing that not everyone would even believe. Um, and uh, there is this entire kind of life that people live and, and, and all of this, you know, faith and magic and things like that are becoming less and less 
something that most people believe. Now, they've still seen magic. They still know things like that happen. They still live in a world with ogres and giants and, you know, gargoyles and stuff. Um, but what they don't see uh, anymore are, you know, every town has, you know, a bunch of clerics who speak to the gods who are competing for followers and things like that. There are still deities. There are still priests who live in town, and they might... They might tell you to offer up prayers to Astramari or to Valinav, and and they might take donations and things like that. But when it comes time for them to heal you, they're going to break out their you know herbs and poultices and actually just use medicine because they don't receive spells. They're not trained to do so, and and worse still, they may not have the right link to be able to even access them. So even if they were incredibly devout they might not be able to do anything about it. Their connection to the deities has become so thin because of the, the, the change in the fabric of magic that they can't even make the connection, that the call doesn't go through. They, 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 they dial and they dial, but no one picks up. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, that's the setup of the deities and the planes beyond. Um, it's important to know these things just so you have an understanding of um, kind of how things uh, play together. Um, there are still, you know, some holy uh, uh, um, uh, events on the calendar and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not totally removed. It's just become mundane to most people. How does that relate to other worlds? Well, there are other primes and how they all relate together. That's up for you. Up up to you to figure out, not me. Um, I'm just going to provide my one world. I think that's plenty. <laughs> uh, I just realized I was on the wrong screen the whole time. Let me swap over to this. There we go. So, uh, if folks have any questions, I'll uh, I'll be happy to answer a, 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 a couple of them here for a little bit, and then we're going to play some... Outer Worlds, I think. Yeah, there aren't uh, there aren't demigods. There might have at one point in time been demigods. I mean, there was there was the the old texts and holy books referred to a pantheon with well over twenty, you know, deities. But today there's only the five. Um, there are there are just not that many. Alara, at the current moment, there are no new domains. Um, I uh, have worked with the existing ones. I have not made any new ones uh, as of yet. I'm not ruling it out. It's just right now that's not uh, that's not on the list. So, yeah. Um, worship is actually like the who worships the god and how is their how are their churches organized um, in most cases um, individual nations will have if they have you know churches and an organized state religion at all um, they will organize it locally there are not uh, any kind of extra state kind of you know outside of outside of state and nation boundary uh, deities that uh, maintain some level of order there's not like one central church to any one deity that all the other churches uh, respond to. It's much more scattered than that. Um, and part of that is just that if you go to a different place, like if you leave um, you know, the, the, the continent behind and go to a different continent, they might worship the same gods, but they'll call them something entirely different. Um, and you, you can, you'll be able to figure it out soon enough that they are the same deity, but they won't, they won't necessarily have the same custom. It's kind of a different sort of thing. So Nohar, as mentioned in one of the previous streams, with primal magic kind of fading away, yeah, druids are rare. They they don't they don't exist anymore. Uh, Falial seventy six clerics do have access to spells. They do. Um, the way magic works in the world is the the general kind of field of magic has been damaged, and in some places it's worse than others, um, or it's fading away. Damage might be the wrong word. No one's quite sure. Um, however, characters can have objects called links 
And for clerics, their links are reliquaries. They're pieces of saints or famous religious artifacts or things like that. And that bolsters their tie to the divine and allows them to cast spells. So, yeah. Correct, Kaffa. It's, it's not that people don't... Uh, it's not that clerics don't exist. As a matter of fact, when you when, when we're talking about player characters, player characters are exceptional, so that's where they might come from. Um, but the town priest is probably just a layman uh, in terms of spell casting, right? Who has a holy book, preaches from it, but when it comes time for him to soothe your wounds, he's going to break out bandages and poultices and herbs and things like that and just make a medicine check. Uh, as far as wizards, they have a similar thing. Instead of it being called a reliquary for them, it's called a shard. It's usually a piece of some powerful magic item. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not all Rasmarin. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there are actual clerics, right? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so the thing to remember in that, like, remember, like, dwarves and elves are uncommon choices now. Um, are, sorry, uncommon in the world, but common for players. Clerics, wizards, the other spellcasters, except for bards, um, are, generally speaking, uncommon in the world, but common for player choice. So what, what you end up with is a situation where... The players can still kind of make the characters they want, but we'll go into that with the understanding that they are exceptional. They are not the norm. The norm is the town priest who just, you know, sings litanies to you and then, you know, uh, gets out a splint for your broken arm. Um, <laughs> Ezra Gad, if your gloom link wants to wear a sombrero, that's that's on you. I can be the first gloom link with a sombrero <laughs> yeah wither king no this is this is uh even tight it's a special setting that i'm designing specifically to work with that better second edition uh do any of the gods have a have a triple god aspect you mean like people venerate different aspects of the same deity yeah they all kind of have that now <laughs> um uh, I'm still kind of building out how all that's going to work, but yeah, all of them have kind of multiple aspects that people pay homage to. Eh, yeah, it is always good to have more shade if you're a Gloomling, that's true. Applebee's, there are some spells which whose rarity is being changed. So if you're playing a cleric, for example, you might find that there are some spells that you just can't get. Especially those who are... Uh, uh, you know, are like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to some emissary of my deity. They don't answer that call anymore. So it's, it's not even necessarily that the spell has become rare. It's just that it doesn't work anymore. So people have stopped bothering. No prophecy still works. Yeah, no prophecy and and omen and and fate, all of that still works in uh, in this world. Um, whether or not it's reliable, no one trusts magic the way they used to, but, you know, it still exists. Uh, but obviously, I mean, when it comes to all uh, uh, role-playing games, it's a little tricky um, to, uh, to kind of play with those sorts of elements. I prefer to uh, let them be a thing that uh, the character uh, and the player, the player, you know, of the character, kind of determines what they want the the fate of their character to be um you know and i think when you build a character you have a, a picture in your head and you can work toward that right i mean you can change it throughout uh the process but really you're imagining where you want this character to go and then through their adventures you're just kind of hoping they get there um so yeah Selendil, this is, uh, this, uh, the Eventide project is being created through my own private imprint called Minotaur Games. Um, I, it's a small thing I toy around with whenever I feel like making a thing. Um, so I haven't done anything with it in a few years now. Uh, so it's just been sitting quietly idle. Um, but, you know, that's, that's my, that's my side imprint. I put out a bunch of first edition PDFs and stuff like that uh, a long time ago. Uh, 
let's see, Alara has asked when the last time an emissary was seen. Um, it's been several hundred years. Yeah. All of that is now getting to the point where everyone assumes it's just a myth. No, not quite, but they're, they're almost there. They're to the point where they don't quite believe that it happens. Poor Glomlings. Don't blame the Glomlings. They're, they're blameless. They're just desperately looking for friends. I've gotten some interesting feedback from that, uh, from folks on the uh, who have supported the Patreon. Uh, that's a reminder. If you want an early look at this material, there's two ways to get it. Uh, the first is just to be the, uh, the basically Eventide Master supporter um, of my Patreon. That's 10 bucks for each one of these PDFs when I release them. Um, and what that'll do is give you kind of an early look. It'll be very light art, light layout, light edit. It's just going to be kind of like, hey, look, you get to see the thing before anybody else. Um, and then that price will then get deducted uh, from the cost of the final PDF for all of the backers. It's just a way for me to generate a little uh, money so that I can buy more art, because art is expensive. Um, and then there is a $25 level, which uh, kind of gets you the same benefits, but you also get to see content super early through my Discord channel. Um, so there's a new ancestry called Glumlings. People in the Discord channel have already gotten to take a look at some of the key aspects of it. Not all of it, but some bits and pieces. I expect that when the uh, penumbrist gets a bit closer, I'll be posting some bits of that up there as well. Are there any atheists in the world? Um, probably. Um, it's not. I, I wouldn't say they're they're necessarily dedicated. I'm sure there are some, right? I mean, it's a big world. Um, but uh, it's more just that they don't really believe that the gods are doing anything for anybody anymore. So why believe in them? Uh, yeah, of course there's still demons and devils and angels and stuff. I mean, the thing to remember is that everything exists in one way, shape, or form or another. It's just, I'm messing with the rarities. So, do demons, devils, angels, and all that kind of exist? Yes. Do they still exist in the world? Yes. Can people still summon them? Yes. Does it happen very often? No. To the PCs? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, are there new planes? Yes, there are some new planes. Um, there are, uh, especially out in the outer planes, there are some new ones out there. I'm, I'm not ready to talk about those yet. I'm still kind of uh, workshopping some of them. So, um, Is there any advanced technology? Um, no, not right at the moment. Um, the, the tech level is kind of mid-fantasy. Um, so, yeah. Swords, crossbows, plate armor. Um, there uh, Are there guns? Um, you know, I'll worry about that when Paizo puts out rules for guns. Um, you know, I don't want to jump the gun on uh, Paizo on that. I'm sorry, that was terrible. I shouldn't have made that joke. That was an awful, awful joke. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I'm sorry. That was terrible. That was terrible. I should, I should feel bad. I mean, I don't, but I should. 